Hey, Vlad here, DevInsideD.com. Welcome to another video. I usually release my videos on Sundays, but Sublime Text, my favorite editor, finally released a version which supports fonts with ligatures, so I couldn't resist taking it for a spin and making a video about it. I'm gonna try to make this video really short and explain what fonts and ligatures are and show you how to install a very popular font called Fiora Code, so you can start using it today, right after the intro. <music> First things first, fonts are distributed in files that you simply download and install on your computer, or to be more specific into your operating system like Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, just to name a few. Once installed, you can use the font from any text editor of your choosing. A font tells the editor how to represent a readable character using a set of symbols also known as glyphs. Some fonts have fancy properties like ligatures, for instance. A ligature is the ability of the font to specify how to visually represent multiple characters as one without changing the binary value behind it. But not all editors or terminals support it. What we have on the left is the Sublime version 3143. Uh, let me see, if you go to about Sublime Text, we see 3143. It's super tiny, but I'm gonna zoom in. And this one is the one that came out yesterday and if we go here, it's the 3170. And if we go to the change log right here, we see that it now supports ligatures, which is awesome. The font that we're talking about today is called Fira Mono. Technically, we're talking about the, the font called Fira Code, but Fira Code is based on Fira Mono. Let me open the page for Fira Mono, which is over here. I'm gonna leave all the links down in the description. Uh, Fira Mono is a monospaced font, and uh, most programming, if not all programming fonts, are monospaced fonts. And monospaced means that every character, doesn't matter how big or small, has exactly the same width. You can download this particular font by clicking over here and then clicking over here. And then you see that if you wanna use it on a website, you can use, for example, like this, and I'm just gonna pull it down from Google servers, or you can simply download it over here. Um, let me show it in the folder. Uh, we just unpack it. We double click it. And you can open a TTF file like this and just click on install, or you can just mark all of them or simply one of them, right click and then press install, uh, click install. And now it's gonna say that it's already installed. Do I wanna replace it? Yes, please, for all of them. And if you're on Windows and if you, if you press uh, the Windows key and R and then you type in control, then you will go to the control panel and over here you can type F and it will jump to, I was hoping it would jump to fonts. So you can click on fonts and over here you will see all of your fonts and some of them are going to be here, Fira Code, Fira Code Red and, and so on. Now, once installed, you can go to any editor of your choosing, like Microsoft Word, for example, and now all of a sudden over here, you will be able to choose them, Fira Code, Fira Mono, and so on. Now, you don't need Fira Mono for using Fira Code, but um, you might fall in love with it and you might wanna use it in a terminal. And what happened to me in the past was that because a terminal wouldn't support ligatures, it would render them somehow weirdly. Like this, for example, is a regular Windows terminal and I have Fira Code set up here. It doesn't render anything weirdly, but it also doesn't render a ligature. So if you have any issues, just use the Fira Mono in your terminal and Fira Code in your actual programming editors. Let's close the terminal and the Microsoft Word document and go straight to the Fira Code page, which is over here, which is a GitHub project created by this guy. And if you scroll down, he has a beautiful picture over here. So this is a regular Fira Mono, and this is what Fira Code is doing. So we can scroll up over here, click on download, it's going to download same 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 as before 2.1 megabytes we extracted the same as before right do the same thing go to the ttf folder mark all of them click install and they're also already installed so i'm just going to say yes overwrite them all i'm going to show you the same how to do the same thing in ubuntu just not to waste your time i already have downloaded over here we're doing the same thing uh we say extract here i'm going here go into ttf um, we can't mark them and click install like this, I believe, right? But we can just open them with the with the font viewer and click install over here. Now it's installed and I'll do this with the others. And there we go. So now this is the same file as I had in Windows. It's already open and it uses the regular Sublime font. In fact, uh, let me maximize Sublime, Sublime now. So if I press Control Shift P and type in settings and go to preferences settings and then maximize it again, then over here on the left, I can just copy that. Um, let me see if I have it over here. I don't. So I just paste it over here on the right. And now I can type in Fira code, for example. Don't forget the comma. Let me minimize that before I save. 
Um, where did it go? Whoops. Where did it go? It's over here. Right, so as soon as I save, it will apply the font and now it's rendered beautifully. So what you can also do is you can choose an alternative. For example, I realized that once the font size is kind of big, which is, um, this is what I'm using when I'm recording tutorials, um, and then fear code light actually looks kind of beautiful. Uh, I actually prefer it. There's also fear code retina and fear code bold and so on. So as, as I already said, I prefer light. Right, and this is the same thing that is uh, happening in Windows. We don't need Ubuntu anymore. Uh, I have my Sublime open over here. Right, so what it's doing is basically as soon as you type an equal sign, for example, and you type in an equal sign again, it will realize okay that it's actually a, a font ligature. Right, so it's still two characters if I mark them like this. Right, and again, not every editor supports this. If I save this file, this is exactly the same file. So as soon as the Sublime on the left gets focus, it will render it. Right, render it in the old way. Before I leave, if you go to options again, you might see that Sublime also introduced um, the font options key in the settings and you can play around with options. Most of them are to turn things off. So I would suggest not to play with them um, unless you experience some issues. And uh, if you do, then you can try to use this one. Uh, I don't know, no italic or no bold or no ligatures or no uh, contextual ligatures, whatever that means and so on. And that's all I got for you today. It's been Vlad, devinsidey.com. Like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. A big part of the content on this channel is related to the Scala ecosystem in one way or the other, but as you can see, I'm also making other kinds of videos.